Studies have shown that the average child starting the first grade of school needs a 400-word vocabulary. Providing this vocabulary will assure that the child will not be left out of classroom or playground activities. Confusion, resentment, bewilderment will have no opportunity to gain a foothold in these children's minds. From their first day in school, they will feel like accepted members of the group, and the transition from home life to school life will be a natural one as it should be. Stated simply, not all first grade students speak English. Yes, in our country, the United States. Ten years ago, in this little Texas town of Ganado, Isabel Verver started the school. She could not speak enough English to ask for a drink of water. Can you imagine yourself as a six-year-old in school, unable to speak or understand those around you? Today, Isabel remembers those frightening months in the first grade in school. Although she has not yet finished high school, she is trying to prevent other youngsters from experiencing the uncertainties she knew. She is teaching preschool children to speak English. Each morning, Isabel collects her class from homes like these. The children have eagerly taken to their new language. Isabel remarked once that organizing these classes and convincing the adults of the need was more difficult than instructing the children. The idea of organizing the classes came to Isabel one day while she was reading a teacher's magazine. From her personal experience and her work with the League of United Latin American Citizens, she was doubly aware of the predicament of her fellow Latin Americans. Without advice or encouragement, Isabel presented her English teaching plan to the school principal. It was well received. The parents of the children, however, were skeptical. At the beginning, her classes had four pupils. It has now grown to 47 children. She also has a class of 35 students in the neighboring town of Edna. Obviously, the parents are now in accord with Isabel's classes. Isabel still conducts the classes each day without pay. Only incentive is the personal satisfaction of working successfully for a good cause. To Isabel, the problem is a simple one. The Latin American is not adequately educated. He is not educated because he has not learned to speak English before he enrolled in school. Her solution is the only solution. Teach the children to speak English. Isabel, however, is only one person. Many more teachers are needed to teach preschool children English. The lack of the ability of the Latin American to speak English before he enters school is the primary reason Latin Americans attain only a 3.5 average grade level. The work of Miss Verver and others must continue. In the results of the work lies hope for the maximum growth of this country. Señora Isabel Verver de la Vega, is that correct? That's, That's correct. Right? That's it. Sí. ¿Cómo está? Buenas tardes. I'm glad to be here at your home in Las Vegas, Nevada. The topic that we're going to cover today is the little school of 400 that LULAC started uh, in the 1950s. And my understanding is that you were one of the teachers in Ganado, Texas, that was teaching uh, the Mexican-American children there in Ganado. Yes. Um, how did you first get started as a teacher there in Ganado for the little school of 400? 
Well, it just happened that when I started school, I spoke no English at all. My parents, my mother was born in Laredo, Texas, but spoke no English. Mm -hmm. My dad was from Mexico, but, Mexico, but uh, you know, he became a U.S. citizen. But nevertheless, they didn't speak any English, so obviously, when I went to school, I spoke no English. And my brother had told me that if I needed to get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, or I was sick, just raise my hand and tell the teacher. Only problem is, I told the teacher I need to go to the bathroom, but she didn't understand me. Eventually, she put her hand on my shoulder so that I could sit down, and I did. And I had an accident, and I was embarrassed. I was uh, just, I started crying, you know, I was all overwhelmed with what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. And probably was the best thing that ever happened to me, because I know that on that day, I said I would learn how to speak English, and you know, I did. I was, because I had learned English, my dad's compadres would always ask them if they could, you know, take me with them to, so to their wives, go to the doctor so I could interpret for them. That's, I became good at it, you know. And what age was that? I'm and I was, I started doing that when I was about eight, eight years old. Interpreting. Interpreting. Okay. And okay. this is for los compadres. For los compadres, neighbors, you know, that okay. would come and ask my mom or my dad, please nos presta, you know, can I borrow Isabel for, so she can go, you know, and interpret. Mm -hmm. When they went to the doctor, obviously. You and know? Would you get paid? No. <laughs> it was all volunteer, okay, you know, okay. some compadres, familias, sí. whatever, you yeah. know. Doctor's so, office, I had taken somebody, you know, as I was with them. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who it was, but I remember reading about Tijerina and Lulek and how much he was into education and, you know, uh, the things that he was doing. And I said, oh my God. You know, my marbles in my head started rolling, mm -hmm. and suddenly I had this idea that, gosh, you know, I could teach the kids during the summer when the school is closed down. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if uh, I can teach them, you know, the ones that are going to start school the next year, if I can teach them just, just basic English language, mm -hmm. you know, words so that they could just communicate with the teacher, like if they're sick, you know, if they're hungry, you know, if they need to get a drink of water, if they want to go to the bathroom, I can just so teach I, those things. Yeah. I don't know why, but, I, you know, I found out, that I called information, I got Tejerina's phone number, because mm -hmm. they, they said they had restaurants, he was the owner of restaurants, right. Tejerina's restaurants in okay. Houston. Mm -hmm. I got the number, I called him up, I identified myself, and I told him that, you know, this is what's happening over here where I live, mm -hmm. and I think this is, you know, I can do this. If you can help me, I know that I can do this during the summer, you know, and, and I can teach them, and, and they don't have to go He says, I'll come next week. week. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, you know, I couldn't believe it. And now i got to tell my dad. Mm -hmm. i got to tell my dad this idea, I have what I want to do, and I know he's going to say no. Because the only thing then was you learn how to pick cotton, you learn how to shop cotton, and, you know, that's it. You don't need no education because you got to survive. Mm -hmm. That was then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately for many of our parents, mm -hmm. you know, that so was they came the way it was. The first time I ever seen a Cadillac, he came in in a Cadillac, black Cadillac. Mm -hmm. I could have, wow, what a car. Mm -hmm. So he came in, they invited him in the house, and then I told him what I would like to do, I mm -hmm. just like I explained to you before. And he was just elated. He couldn't believe it. He says, tell me what you need. Just tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'll go talk to the principal. Oh, no, don't talk to the principal. I'll get to school for you. I says, because I'm in the office all the time because I was always getting kids out of trouble, mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, when we went to school, we were segregated, mm -hmm. okay. And so we were roped up, you know, the playgrounds were roped off and all that. I go to him. He's, he thinks it's a great idea. He says, who's the responsible party? I told him he'll come and meet with you. Just tell me when. Mm -hmm. And Tehidina came down, met with him. And so once you get started teaching these classes, how, how old were you then? When I started, I, I would say I was about 14, 14 and a half, something like that. Okay, and your parents gave you permission? Yes. Okay. But I need to back up and say to you, because I think it's it's important, that when I said to Tijerina that I, these are basic, I want basic. So then Tijerina words. said to me, how about if I bring a professor to meet with you. And then the two of you, you tell that professor what you want, 
and then together you can form some words. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And so before we started school, he did that. He, and gosh, I wish I could remember the name of the professor, but I can't. Did he come from Houston? Or he from came, uh, I believe he came from Houston. Okay. I believe he, but I'm not sure, but I believe he might but, have. Was he an Anglo or Mexican? -American? No, he, he helped me with the, yeah. the development of the four. Was there a words. grading system that you used where they got an A or B or how did you grade them? No, I didn't grade them. What I did do is uh, one of the things that uh, Tijerina did and he said, what do you need? You know, when I, before I started putting this thing together, he said, tell me what it is that you need. And I said, well, I would like to have like, I would like to have milk or cookies, um, oranges, apples, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, so when they learn that I can, this is what they get in return. Mm -hmm. And and so this is what I, I did not, I never graded the, ki the children, I never did that. Uh, what it did do is that when they learned something, they would be What rewarded. happened at the end of the three months? Was there a graduation ceremony? What what took place? Did uh, Mr. Tijerina come and give yes, the kids? Yes, he what did. Happened? Yes, uh, Tijerina came down and, uh, you know, he brought a lot of goodies for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cookies, candies, and, you know, little trinkets, you mm -hmm. might say, mm -hmm. to give to the children. Okay. Uh, we invited the parents. Uh, some parents was able to make it, some parents were not, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, and I know that they took pictures, but unfortunately I, I don't have. And I, I think one of the reasons is, uh, even though they sent me stuff, I was too young to realize, you know, what we actually had done, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't until later in life that, that I realized that maybe I actually did something that was good, you know, really good. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that, so therefore I, I never, you know. So how long did you teach happy. within the School of 400? I, uh, I did it a couple of semesters, mm -hmm. and then I had to go to work because yeah. my father was a farmer, and he, uh, we, well, you're from Texas, you know, hurricanes, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And they wipe, wipe out the whole crop. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we had a bad year, wiped out the whole crop, and I, I was the only one that could go to work because I was the English speaking kid. So you would have continued teaching yeah. if it were not that you had to work. Oh, yes. I was very, you know, bubbly, very active, very, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and, and maybe that helped. I don't know. But I do know that almost immediately you saw the difference. I started out with five children, okay, and I said, Oh, I'm like, this is not going to work. You know, I expected to get more children because I went knocking door by door. Mm -hmm. But remember, learn how to pick cotton, learn how to chop cotton. We have to put food on the table. That was our parents. Food on the table for all the children, okay? Mm -hmm. And almost every parent was the same over there at that time. So five children I start with. So I says, how do I get other kids to come in? You know, they're going to... Well, I have to show the parents. I have to show the other parents this is what we can do with the kids. So remember I told you that earlier the first sentence was, may I please go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. I says, I want you to listen to, and I took those kids with me. I want you to listen to those these kids, what they have learned in one week. Please give me your child so they can learn what they've learned and they're going to learn more. So you use your you use your students as models, right? Of what the other kids could learn, exactly. And you took them to the houses, exactly, and talked to the parents, exactly. Okay. And you know what? Before you know it, mm -hmm. it exploded for that summer. It okay. exploded before you know it. It exploded.